Yo, it's the Grow Green Podcast. Hold another fat one, puffing on that first class green. Take another puff, puff, hey. Drift in the clouds up, up and away. Hear all about cannabis sorts of culture, plus cultivation, news and entertainment. Not forgetting that the cute Dalmatian. Grow Green is so amazing. We do massive dabs, not talking about the dance move. Grow Green, put your lighters on my dude. Hash joy, your linen's so great. Smoke cannabis every single day. We do massive dabs, not talking about the dance move. Grow Green, put your lighters on my dude. Boom. Joy, this is. <laughs> Fired up. Yo, what up out there? It's the Grow Green Podcast. Podcast episode number, number 18. 18. Holy shit. Getting up there. Double digits. Oh, man. Double digits. Today, we're going to be doing a little bit of talking about some a popular topic that I see around lately, and I see a lot of misinformation, a lot of horrible information, a lot of people getting... Um, Bad genetics through uh, third party uh, people, and uh, just really when it comes down to getting genetics, that's a big thing in in your in any gardener's grow. Uh, that's going to be like your major major investment. It doesn't mean monetary investment, but that's going to be a time investment because if you pick out something bad, if you don't pick out the right genetics, you're going to be putting all your time and all your effort, all this dedication, all this money to try to keep those plants happy. Uh, to a type of genetic that just won't produce or yield or give off to you what you it's not going to give back to you what you're putting into it you know what i'm saying you need to find genetics that are strong just like uh any kind of a high class car you know what i mean you want something to go fast it's going to be the fastest it's going to grow the biggest it's going to be the the most immune not have any issues like that you need to find some good solid genetics and today we're going to try to uh, give you guys a few tips to try to locate genetics locally in Alaska or if you're abroad and out in the United States or, or internationally we're going to try to give you guys a few uh, different websites or uh, sources for different kinds of genetic seeds uh, be it clones or whatever and just give you guys um, some information to try to absorb to keep from making the wrong decision initially we want you guys to make that right decision from the get-go and uh, yeah Let's just start off by talking about... Uh, it's definitely one of the biggest questions we get is where the biggest do I question. can get some good genetics? Can you give them to me? Where do I go? Give me some sites. Give me a guy. Give me something, man. And we're trying to help you out with this episode. Yeah. And you know, the thing that makes that hurts me right here in the heart uh, is when I see somebody that is super dedicated and, and they're very good gardeners and they have to deal with the fact that uh, they their buddy gave them some seeds or they got a seed out of a bag or whatnot. Now they've put all this effort towards growing this plant and they come in here and they're like, how come it's not doing so well? You know, it could be you're growing, but a big portion of it, like I said, is the genetics. So, you know, you can set yourself up for failure. And today we're going to try to keep you guys from having as many issues as you can run into in the garden when it comes to genetics is the first thing you need to worry about and try to get everything on point, locked in and ready to rock. On that so, note, here's a dab for you. Alien dab up. So uh, I'd like to point out some local breeders. We got a few local breeders up here. Uh, you guys already know the, the big supporters of our show. We got CA to AK Genetics, and that's uh, the they're out of Alaska. We, you know, right here, CA to AK. Um, I think I have, might have some of their beans. Let me see if I got some CA. To AK. About the pack to get show you some so you get show you guys what got some real genetics look like. Just a few, just a few. Ooh, we just tasty. brought a few. I didn't bring all of my my whole genetics, but I did bring stuff that contains local genetics. So uh, yeah, I got some some of the Glacier OG and the White OG Chem from C8 AK. Uh, still got a pack of original. The first packs of the Matsu grapes seems like a very popular strain in Alaska right now. Everybody, everybody in Alaska that's been popping those has had really, really good success. So if you're looking for some terps in your life, CA to AK, some Matsu grapes. Um, I honestly don't think I have much more than that. Uh, oh yeah, we got some. There's a couple of packs down there. What do we got down there? Is there any CA to AKs down there? I think we might still have one to give away. You want to give away a pack? The CA to AK? We're still we got doing one left there. Yeah, so we still got a pack of CA to AK to give away. What do we got? 
Bitty Jack F3, the OG Jack Finos. Mm. So, yeah. Oh, Ooh. shit. Seeds down. <clears throat> so, that's CA to AK. You know, they're local. You can, and, and to get a hold of them, the easiest way that I could suggest to you is they don't use Instagram very well, but uh, you can usually hit them up on the Facebook. I know they do have a CA to AK. Uh, if you can't figure it out, Feel free to give us a DM, shoot us a message. I will connect you guys if that's something you're interested in. Local genetics from CA to AK, solid. You know what I mean? And solid. Solid genetics. Solid genetics. And uh, that's my boy, and he sports the show. Super good dude. Uh, second of all, we got... You want to grab that other one out of there? I don't oh, think man. I have any of, any stuff. Yeah, you got Actually, you know what? Here, just one second here. I do have some stuff. Pull that one out. What are we looking for? Okay. The cool new Three Beans Genetics. Three Beans Genetics. Homie. Three Beans is a local guy too, local genetics company, and uh, he We're works. Actually, giving these ones away. Yeah, at the end that's of the month. End of the month. That's a few more days. So you guys haven't got on it. Don't sleep on that. You guys better shoot. Tell them how they can enter. To enter, you have to watch episode. I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it's sixteen. See giveaway, and all you have to do is make sure you're a subscriber to our channel, and comment on that video, and you are entered to sweet, win sweet, these sweet, seeds. Sweet. Oh, yeah, look at this. See, I got the OG packaging here. So, look at this OG packaging. There's some Bowser 29 oh, F2s. Old school. Uh, man, I don't know. Oh, wow. Look at this. I found this rare, rare seed. There's one seed in there, and I one found guy. it. I was super hoping it was going to be something cool. Uh, Non-released. Uh, just one little puff of pollen, apparently. Hit the uh, Ninja OG from CA to AK at self backed itself. And there was only like one seed that he found. And boom, this guy right here has it. Boom. Every You never know. That one seed could be the gym. It's usually not. You usually got to pop like 20 to find a good one. But you never know. Could be. And what happens if we have a fire and that's the only seed I have left? You know, this guy's popping it. <laughs> so, yeah, I, don't, I, I did have some other stuff from uh, <clears throat> Three Beans. But uh can't find it right at the moment. But I will tell you that all of the genetics that comes out of Three Beans, very solid genetics, very stable for the most part. Uh, and that's another thing. When we talk about stability, what we're talking about is, is let's just jump right into that before we go on to a couple of other local people since I already just popped it out Ooh, like that. George going wild. Yo, you got that. It's that nine times Tane. Super tane, powerful. Man. But no, uh, let's just talk about that for a second. Stability. So if you have a, ge a genetic that's unstable, that could mean that during the flowering period, it could decide with the tiniest amount of stress that it wants to become a male. And it may throw pollen and or grow male flowers. You and, do not uh, want that, especially as a newer grower. No, fuck y'all. What that'll cause is the pollen hits the actual buds causes the plant to go to seed. So you get a lot of seeds. It's going to reduce the amount of THC. The potency is going to go whoop, way down. It's just going to be mostly for seed. I mean, you can recover it and make oil out of it or something, but it's, something. it's a fuck up. That's what it is, basically. So stability is very important. You want to make sure that your genetics are stable. So when you're communicating with somebody to buy genetics, say, hey, how stable are these? Are these feminized seeds? And when I say feminized seeds, it means I took a female and I stressed it out or some way, non-naturally, forced it into being a male. And then I took that male flowers and I pollinated the same female. So those are female, forced female seeds and those are feminized. And if you go buy a pack of seeds and it's 10 females, that's what's happened. And so what happens there when you take a female and you breed it with a female, you know, what happens is you end up with a little bit of, there's no, there's no rod, it's just... Somehow you end up with a bunch of dicks. I don't know why that works, but stability, you end up with males. So if you breed two females, you know, on an average basis and you pop 10, you're going to get a couple of those bad boys that turned into a fem and turned into a male from a female. And uh, that's no bueno. So that's stability for you. That's stability. Yeah, you don't want an unstable genetic because it could uh, herm and it could cause issues in your garden. What if you had, you know... A Let's just say you had a, a, a big commercial garden, since we're talking big numbers, and you only had one plant that you thought was the bomb, and all of a sudden, <whistles> shit's done. You know, their whole crop's fucking seeded. So, that stability is very important, especially when it comes to you commercial guys. You guys need to pay the fuck attention. Mm. So, stability, number one. Good genetics, number one. 
Uh, jumping right back into local genetics. Three Beans, supporter of the show. Check them out. Orange Terp River City. I'm serious. The orange terps that come out of these Bowsers is ridiculous. And if you guys haven't tried the Bowser, uh, you don't have to be black market. It's all over the shelves in Alaska right now. Hit up, um, let's name some places. Green Degree, uh, there's Dankridge downtown. There's uh, the Bad Grammar out in Wasilla. There's, uh, mm, I'd hate to drop any other ones and not them not have it on deck, but I, all of those places have the Green Life Supply weed and they have Bowser and they also have uh, Susitna Sage, which is a Bowser cross. Terp City. Oranges. If I had oranges, I'd be throwing them at you right now because that's what that's what the Bowser does. It just throws oranges in a your face. A lot of orange all in your face. All right. That's the, second, that's the second solid breeder in Alaska if you guys are looking for local genetics. Uh, third solid breeder, uh, kind of a underground OG dude, and he pulls out some flame. Ooh. I'm serious. It's pretty heated, and uh, I'm going to be actually dropping some of his stuff soon uh, along with a few other breeders. I'm going on a uh, Terp Fest. I'm going to try fest. to find some Terps in our life. Going to bring in more Terps after down to California. There's just not enough Terps in my life in Alaska, bro. I need some of that Cali Terp City. So, what do you got right here? What do you got there? AK Legend Gardens. AK Legend Gardens. Gonna show them the logo, the cool tie logo, super Check cool guy. Um, yeah, super cool dude, homie, 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 homie. The dude puts out fire, and all of his genetics are solid, you know. And if you have an issue, the thing about local genetics and having a local breeder or somebody that you can actually talk to and wrap it up and say, "Hey, man, this is." how it's growing it's doing this and he can say oh man i love that plant i know that plant you need to do this you need to do that or this to make it do what you want <clears throat> so that's a huge advantage when it comes to local uh local seed stock or, or getting something from somebody local you can get stuff from california Oregon, Washington, Nevada, doesn't matter. Michigan, doesn't matter. But you're going to have a little, there's going to be a wall there when it comes to communication between you and the breeder. It's not like, hey, man, uh, I'm going to send you a message and wait for a reply. Luckily, in Alaska, most of the time, our community is pretty tight knit. So you, you could see that guy and be like, hey, bro, my shit's doing this. What should I do? You know, and he could be like, hey, man, this is all you got to do. Hit it with a little cow max. You go, boom. boom. So it's good to have that knowledge of local breeders and the accessibility of local information from those guys to help you with that grow that will help you out tremendously so those are the three top local breeders that i would suggest you to try to talk to uh there's another one too uh th that i would suggest we just don't have any seeds here oh, and yeah. super legit dude and he's uh uh, there's a few of them, actually. It's a collaboration. You guys might have seen them in the scene. They they actually have visited down to the uh, Kai Times Cup. They've been around the scene. And that's uh, Swamp Donkey Seeds. Swamp Donkey Seeds. Swamp Donkey Seeds. Seeds. Yeah. Um, pretty good shit out there. They got some heat coming out. Uh, they've won a few cups. Uh, some solid genetics in there. And they are really good about doing communication, supporting local people, giving out that information. They're not like the type of... There's a lot of breeders that'll be like, ah... Figure it out, bro. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you, man. I'll grow that fire, but uh, I'm not going to help you. But <laughs> people in Alaska, when it comes to these four breeders, they're all about spreading that love. And that's what you need to find when you find a breeder or you find a genetic person that you're going to get solid genetics from. You can find somebody that loves to spread that information to make the cannabis community in a general sense grow and 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 just get bigger and bigger and bigger it's it, we don't want to hold it back we want we don't want to keep it all for ourselves we want it to just tremendously grow and exponentially get bigger and bigger and bigger you know what I'm saying just like the amount of globs i do every day mm -hmm. so speaking of globs i'm gonna go ahead and drop one right now and uh do cj massive dubs not talking about the dance move you can uh give them a little information and stuff that you know breeding wise where where did you get your seeds at first i'm curious oh man back at the old potluck Pollock. Yeah. Oh yeah, do a little bit of that. That guy's cool. What's his name? Uh, I don't even remember his the name. The cannabis. So the cannabis uh, emissary, and his name is. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Feel bad for not yeah. researching here, but I, it was this little card he gave me, and it was for a vet thing down that they had can of care. Mad love to Pollock. And it was at the Pollock Events place. And he hooked me up with a seed pack. It wasn't my first seeds, but it was like my first. Like legitimately local, local mm -hmm. and that was what was it? Pineapple Express caught cross with uh, 
pre-99 uh, White, Widow? White Widow or something. Gotcha. And it was Alaska Pineapple. It sounds yeah. like it sounds like some of the shaman's work or something, but I don't mm-hmm. know. But um, question for you. Did you, Were you able to uh, uh, communicate with him about the grow, or were you able to get any information? Um, you know what? I, I could have. I'm sure I could have. He was available. You just didn't just, have any issues? No, I didn't have any this issues with him. Beast. So Did a lot of research. Pineapple Express looked like pineapples. The old donkey pineapples huge, smelt huge great. Huge pineapples. Man. I did the dumb thing though and did not save any of these strains. That's yeah, newbie oh, let's get for into you. that. There you go. That's see you go. talking about what you do brings us into some good information. Grew some beautiful ladies, yeah, but unfortunately, about that. why wouldn't we want to keep them? Why would we want to keep it? Take cuttings because once you grow that one female, that there's only going to be one version of that female. Even if you pop fifty seeds. So like. Like I'm, I'll tell you right now, I'm, I was a dumb newbie. I'm just thinking all these beans. I'm gonna have that same girl. So fuck it. Let's just keep cutting them down. I got more beans. Maybe this last bean, I'll just save one. Being lazy, I I didn't know at the time each one of those was their own lady. Yeah, call me retarded, but he, well, he's still he was still new to the genetics thing. You know, he knew how to grow and stuff, but he didn't realize. A lot of people don't realize that. Don't feel naive, bro. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people out there that just don't know, and that's what we're here for. Yeah. We're telling you. So if I pop, you know, I got seeds right here. I got some. Uh, these are Bowser 29s. If I was to pop all these, there's like, you no, know, there's a dozen in there. I'd probably get, mm, I, I guess I'd probably get like six, seven, eight different phenos. And when I say pheno, that means uh, that's a type of a plant. You know what I mean? Explain to them what a pheno is. Well, I take this fat dab. Ah, uh, just a different type of like if the two parents have kids, it's, all the kids are going to be slightly different kind of thing. I'm thinking, but also like I was confused originally because like feminized and original too. I didn't really know like why feminized are so looked down upon in the community, and like I just thought they were all that's the sick strain you're going to get, and it's going to rock out for you every time. Kabobbled! Woo! Oh Jesus! You know what I mean, though. Yeah. So like. Feminized gets looked down on not only because of the instability, but it also gets looked down on because what will happen is is <coughs> want to be breeders or non-knowing or non-caring breeders. And there's a lot out there. You guys know who you are. Um, they will take feminized seeds that have already been femmed, and they will take and seed those or plant those all. Find one they really like, one that's not. Uh, herm, or at least they think it's not, but it still h- holds weakened genetics. You know, what I mean, yeah, maybe it didn't herm, but the genetics are now less stable than they were, regardless if it's hermed on you, turned into a male. They're less stable. So then they're like, shit, dude, this is the boss. This plant is the beast. And it, it may be, you may get really lucky, but then they take that and then they breed it into another plant. And so yet they've gone one step further down, decreasing the genetics. <clears throat> so you're destabilizing cannabis as a whole. You're breeding these plants into seeds that people are taking and, and feeling like they're genuinely strong plants and then unknowingly cu- taking cuttings, passing them out, not telling the generation, the genetics of the family heritage of that plant to the person they give it to. The person's taking that plant, breeding it to something else, passing that out. We're passing out fucking shitty genetics everywhere. Oh, That's man. why people that fi- look down on fems, true breeders will look down on you when you say, I got fems. Put in the work, bro. Pop 10, get five fems. And those five fems, they had a mom and a dad. It wasn't two women. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up. Let's put some solid genetics back into fucking cannabis. Let's bring some of these solid male and female regs back in. Let's bring the reg price up and drop that female price. Because really, it's just junk, in my opinion. I mean, we might get lucky, but why we want to degrade shit? I just, that's, you know, I could go all day on that. So that's another thing why seeds are so great as opposed to <coughs> clones. If you're buying clones from someone is because your seeds aren't going to come with bugs. That's been another big thing kind of going around as people buying clones with bugs on them and shit. And Alaska has ah. been a lot of them. I know it's everywhere, but yeah, it happens. Shit. I just saw a post this morning where a guy posted on Craigslist. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. Dude posted on Craigslist Ooh, warning people. Got go clones. So I got so clones place. from this They're place. away. And I put spider it in my garden, and clones. it's my whole garden now has spider mites. Ah. You know, but at the same time, that's like, okay, do a little bit of thinking. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to go get a child from a third world country. <laughs> Should I put it, like, 
immerse it right into my family, or do you think I should sterilize it for a little while? Probably going to sterilize it and let it, like, acclimate to the situation. Make sure it doesn't freak out, you know, blow up something crazy. So same thing with genetics, you know what I mean? If I go buy a clone from somewhere, I guess that's kind of off point, but if I go buy a clone from somewhere, I'm going to put it in a separate area, not in the same garden, not in the same room, not in the same building, probably. I'm going to take that clone and I'm going to put it in a dome. I'm going to put it somewhere. I'm going to spray bug spray on that bitch. I'm going to fucking hit it hard and I'm going to let it sit in an area and just kind of like sterilize itself. And I'm going to sit there and I'm going to watch it <laughs> for a couple of weeks. Let it grow. Inspect underneath the leaves. Get all underneath it. Even if you got Look that thing it. from your best buddy, Tony right. Montana, down the street, that you inspected his plants, you didn't see any bugs, but don't Hell matter. Don't no. trust him. No. No, Just walking man. with it down the road, you might pick up something. Bro, I've gotten cuts from some of the most elite gardeners. And the thing is, is elite gardeners, they have an IPM. Okay, most good gardeners have an IPM. They have a, a pest management system that's integrated into their garden on a regular basis. And so, they won't be passing out cuts that are going to be um, infected, they think. But in reality, sometimes everybody no, has no. bugs, right? Maybe their IPM was so good that the bugs that they did have never got a chance to like get right. a hold, so they never saw them. Mm -hmm. So I have been given cuts from people that didn't even know they had bugs, or if they had bugs, their IPM management system controlled it completely. And when they gave me the cuts, no longer did the cut get IPM'd because it was in my area and uh, turned out to have bugs. You know, obviously, like I said, it's my, not my first rodeo, so when that happened, the plants weren't in my garden, you know, and I was able to see the situation and I was like, okay, there's an infestation. So now I'm going to act double hard and I'm going to take an attack mode. I'm going to go into attack mode. And so it was a strain I wanted to keep. Normally I would just probably throw that whole fucking thing away. But I went into it, attack mode and I got rid of all the bugs. There was like 10 cuts, but I only got one that lived. All the others died from the bug spray. There was like one or two that lived. And I grew that bitch out for like 60 days before I ever took a cut off it so it was clean. You know what I mean? And uh, it, it worked out. It, it, but in a normal situation, don't take cuts that are bad. You know, you don't don't take mm. cuts from anybody. Yeah. And if you do, quarantine it. So that's another thing. And <clears throat> there's a lot of local places. So if you're trying to source clones, that is a good choice. Mm -hmm. Especially not having to spend the time. You know, it takes 30 to 60 days sometimes from seed to where you can sex a plant if you're getting regular plant uh, seeds and uh, see if it's a male or female. And then it takes an additional amount of time from that. So, yes, it's an extra step, a little bit longer of amount of time that it takes to do things. But in the end, it's going to be worth it, in my opinion, to start from seed because you know you won't have any bugs for the most part. I have heard uh, rumors, and I'm not sure if they're rumors or not. You guys could throw up some PMs or DMs and uh, let me know. I heard uh, tell that uh, it's either russets or, um, I don't know, russet mites or the other shitty-ass crazy mites that can embed themselves and lay eggs in the seeds. Mm. I don't know if that's just a rumor or not, though. So... For me, right now, I still feel like seeds are the safest thing. And I don't, I don't think you're going to find anything like that in Alaska, at least. It's some of these crazier places down in the lower 48 that have been doing commercial for a while and spreading out uh, diseases and pests. And not, not they're being careless, you know what I'm saying? So that's what you got to watch out for is careless gardeners that are just out there to make a buck, not out there to try to serve the people. For me, it's, uh, it's more uh, patience over profits, you know what I'm saying? So... That's how I kind of like to roll. I try to keep the people happy before it before you get the money, because money's gonna come if people are happy. Mm -hmm. So money's gonna go away if they ain't happy though. So keep that in mind, growers out there. Fucking tackle box of seeds. Oh yeah, I got sweet. another bag down here too. <laughs> what we got down here? Good. Good. Got some in-house. Crazy. That's only one box. Oh yeah, yeah. Got some scapegoats. Oh man. I don't know. We got a lot of kinds of shit. Look at this, look at this one, look at this one. Uh, Granddaddy Purple, cross with Tony Clifton, OJKB. Like a basketball card collector over here. I got that Michael Jordan rookie card, I got that Larry Bird, I got... <laughs> Gotta keep that good genetics on deck, bro. <laughs> Gotta get them, to, yeah. them genetics on deck. What's up next, you know? There's gems in there. I try to find, I'm a gem hunter. 
I'm a gem hunter. I'm looking for gems. You're looking for them rookie cards. Probably, I'm looking huh? for them. them I'm looking new, for them. Them air talent. cards. Nah, rookie cards are basic, mm-hmm. bitch. I want to find the that card that's got that little white spot in the corner that nobody else got. Ooh, the rare one. That fucking air rare. Mm. So, yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about. We've talked about uh, some local breeders. We talked about you can go get clones at a, a at a at a. Um, dispensary or a cultivation place if they're selling them that's a good option as long as you take the time to do a, a, a pest management system even if they don't have bugs you want to automatically assume that those clones you're buying have bugs so come in to your local grow shops and get yourself some basic pest management say hey man i don't think these got bugs you know, obviously don't take them in there. But I just got these new clones. What's like a really uh, not too harsh organic pest spray? You know, something like Spinosad or or something like that. Uh, what is that other one? Uh, Nukem. Nukem's a good one. Yeah, hit them, hit them with that shit. Hit them with some, fuck, hit them with that Perithium. Hit them with the uh, Mighty Wash. It doesn't matter, you know. I'd rather see your plant die. Honestly, I would rather see a cutting die and not give me bugs than... Me spraying a cutting and he and it, or she barely make it through, but I know for a fact there ain't no bugs on it. You know what I mean? That's just the options you have. So, I two, that. get the clones from there, but just be wary and make sure you do an IPM or make sure you put some sort of a sterilization before you introduce it into your garden. So the, the knowledge. Throw the 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 biggest way that everybody gets seeds, right? What's the biggest way? Online. Online, yeah. Online. Online's the way. Uh, there's a lot of sites. I mean, we can sit here and list names and names and names. Um, but again, I think we, you, we've we listened to our, if you've listened to our podcast, you've probably heard them a mm-hmm. couple times. There's uh, there's Team Dank and uh, Seeds Here Now is a really good one. Um, SeedsHereNow.com. That'd probably be... <laughs> I'm not trying to drop names for anybody. You know? Really, you want to get anything from them? And if you guys want to send me some, go ahead. Find strain you want to get. That's probably where I go. Research the <clears throat> best websites that offer that strain or He's the exactly companies. Right. He's exactly do a little right. research and don't just dive in the first site. This guy is buy really good at checking out reviews too. So you can go on to Reddit, and mm-hmm. you can type in on Reddit genetics or uh, seeds, and uh, there's a lot of reviews for seed companies. So yeah, and I'm uh, seeds here now. Uh, where else have I gotten seeds from? I gotten through attitude back in the day. That's through uh, attitude in our country, kind. though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, I know recently that uh, Canada, what used to be a good place to get seeds from, pretty solid genetics and a lo- really reliable. Uh, but I, as of recently, I think that they have made it illegal to export uh any seeds so i'm not sure if there's seeds going in there coming out of there anymore i'm not 100 percent. another one is uh surefire seeds that's a good place to get it you know honestly in my opinion i don't use any of these websites personally i contact breeders directly and it's not that hard if you have the internet you know do a little research find the source it's, it's really not that hard you have instagram do you have facebook you know what I mean? It, it's as simple as picking up your old El Tablo here and fucking typing it in. Oh, well, um, you know, get online. Okay, let's, for example, let's uh, use one. Here, let's do one real quick here. I'll do it really quick for you guys. Name name any brand of seeds. Uh, ocean Grown. Ocean Grown. Oh, Ocean Grown. That's a good one, too. Buy seeds from Ocean Grown. Those go. guys are legit. That's OceanGrownSeeds.com. Those guys, they, they put out stable genetics and legit... No fem, all rag, a okay. That'd probably be. I'd probably go there before I went to uh, seeds here now. If I was looking for an, an ocean grown specific one, but you know, ocean grown seeds. I just typed that in and it came up on Google. But we could do uh, uh, archive seeds seed bank. Okay, you know, we do the Archive Seed Bank. Shit, I even spelled it wrong and it came up on my phone. Google, gotta love it. Yeah, it's top one, Archive Seed Bank. Boom, right there. You know what I mean? Archive Seed Bank. So, internet, and, and you say, hey, this is a question that we get out of people from the internet. They're like, so how legit is it? Do we get our seeds? Are we going to get them? I've never got, I've never not gotten seeds. 
And the only time that I've not gotten seeds, it was I all I had to do was send an email or make a phone call or let them know that I did not get them. And they were more than willing to send out another pack, you know, more discreet or a different way so that maybe that it would get through that time. Because sometimes I'm not going to lie. Sometimes shit gets pulled. It was a little weird at first sending your money to some people and just expecting to get something, you know. Right. Yeah. And well, I mean, it's not like you're going through. I don't know, your normal type of Amazon.com situation or something. For sure, yeah. So if you're going to go get... So, and you know, I put on there, I said go on Instagram. But make sure that you, when you go on Instagram, you spend a little bit of time to do a little bit of research about the person you've looked up. Hopefully, it's going to be a major breeder and you scroll through their uh, Instagram, For, look at their they're pictures. They're going to have a reputation online. Yeah, you know so what I mean? They're not going to There's a lot of fakes over. out there, so definitely be wary. And it can happen. You can lose money. But the thing is, is if you ask a few questions, hell, send us some messages. I don't care. Um, ask a few questions from the breeder. The answers you're going to get is going to be able to pretty much give you an idea if they know what the fuck they're talking about or if they're the real person or whatnot. Um, forums, man. Get on forums online. Get on Facebook. There's a lot of Facebook pages. If you're in Alaska, get on Alaska Cannabis Review, ACR. Uh, ask some questions in there. I guarantee you get on that page. People are going to point you in. The, ten people are going to point you in the right direction and two are going to point you in the wrong direction. So... <laughs> You know what I mean? But honestly, sure, the people that get point the people that point you in the wrong direction, the, those other eight people are going to shun the shit out of them. So, right yeah, on. get online. That's Do where it's research. at. You guys can figure get it out. Get them from You're your smart. dispensary. I believe in you. you know, stable genetics. Keep your shit legit. You don't want to grow junk. You don't want to spend your time wasting on junk. So, like I said at the beginning of this podcast, and I'll say it again now. The biggest, most important thing you can do in your garden is to make sure that you have really good genetics, stable, solid, and not fems. I mean, if you got a fem, okay, but don't be breeding that. Don't be trying to put it back in the system. We don't want no weak shit. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, stable, reliable, internet. Dispensaries. All that good shit. Weeds everywhere. Fuck yeah. All over the place. Just make sure that you ask questions. That's the biggest thing. Don't just be, don't go in and let them take your advantage of you. Don't grow shit. Grow dank. Fuck yeah. So where are we at, man? About mm, Closing it up. Maybe do some shout outs. Last Let's do minutes. some shout outs. Back yeah. again on C8AK. Three shout beans. Shout outs to C8AK. AK Legends. Three beans. AK oh, yes. Legends. Swamp Donkey Seeds. Mm, Swamp uh, Donkey Seeds. We may be possibly... Going remote, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see. If flips around, we go remote. You'll know. <laughs> yep. If uh, we don't, we'll uh, probably see you guys next time. Yeah. With Eric, motherfucking we. CJ Stone. Keep CJ those dabs lit. The Green Podcast number eighteen. Keep your mind. It's CJ Stone hey, and Eric Weed on the Green Crow Podcast. What up, CJ Stone? Eric Weed, we are back with oh, some man, that was a nice local genetics Ooh, holders. Local genetics guests. You guys, know what I'm you know, where you can get some stuff locally. Yeah. If you guys are out there and you're going to be around uh, this coming weekend, you know, uh, today's Monday when we air this. What's that, Salmon be, Fest coming up? Is salmon that the Fest. event? Yep, Salmon Fest, and that's in, uh, where's that at, guys? Yeah, where's that located? Yeah. Kenai. Or wait, is it the Nilchik? The Nilchik. Past Kenai. So we're here. Uh, Mr. AK guys, Legend Garden. Over here. Yep. And then, Fuller uh, himself doesn't want to be in the Fuller, screen, right but he is there. here. Cloud of Smoke. I'm sure you'll be seeing big fat Big fat globs coming, coming, coming your way soon. <sighs> Second hand, I'm loving it. Get twice as much. So we'll be uh, talking about Salmon Fest, and these guys are going to be down there doing some. Uh, uh, Donation, taking donations, right? Let's let them go Something ahead and like tell that. us where are you guys going to be at. What are you out? doing? Well, we're going to be at uh, Salmon Fest. A little bit closer, I can hardly hear you. We're going to be at Salmon Fest. Perfect, perfect. Um, we're going to be at the River Stage. Um, we got a Money. AK Gypsy Girl set up. Um, she's going to be selling some shirts, some crystals, uh, essential oils um, for for the hot days out there. Are, you wanna, are we talking infused? Infused oils, N- non infused oils, non-infused oils. Um, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, they don't they don't want us doing that. Yeah, I'm just curious. You never know. Some CBD is legal in 50 states, so it could be infused with CBD. You never know. I'm just curious. Yeah, we love like CBD uh, at our mm-hmm. booth. Uh, definitely stop by and chat. Um, everybody at the booth is uh, highly knowledgeable. 
about uh, what's going on locally as far as genetics and um, uh, different strains that are, are being produced and uh, developed. Um, currently, uh, we're going to have uh, strains from three different uh, local growers, um, and they're going to be uh, they're going to be uh, highly available. Um, and we encourage you guys to uh, check them out. I'm sure a little bit later in the podcast here, when I get a little buzz, we can uh, go over a few of the details Deep, on that. More of the details, yeah. Yep. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Um, but uh, we're definitely want to get dabs give a, off this locomotion, some locomotion. local fire. Give a shout out warmer. to these guys here on the podcast, mm, uh, doing their thing. Um, been for- around. Uh, these these folks here and they're they're definitely good people and uh we're stoked to to be able to reach out to all communities um you know that we're we're not privy with you know alaska's a a big state and uh we appreciate everybody following the feed here and uh checking out the podcast sweet man we appreciate it you know and i'm and it's cool to be in alaska and be a part of the scene and uh uh, it's good to know that, you know, I've grown in-state, out-of-state stuff, uh, seeds from overseas, seeds from California, Washington, Oregon, Woo! Colorado. Choo-choo, locomotion, come woo, up woo. for you. Hell yeah, I've grown from all over, and, you know, there's some of the most fire shit I've gotten out of seed packs that came from Alaska, so I'm really proud to, to say that I'm from Alaska, and some of the best heat that I've seen is coming out of Alaska. So if you haven't checked it out and you're somewhere else besides Alaska, you need to get a piece of that. So uh, contact. <laughs> Us, hit us up. We can hook you up with some of the local genetic people that maybe can be supplied through uh, other wares, or you can maybe make a trip up here and check us out, and uh, we could hook you up with somebody local. And it's really good that we talked about it earlier uh, with me and CJ. Uh, I think the three guys that you guys are going to have the main the main genetic people. Uh, Swamp who, who are those guys? Uh, we got Swamp Donkey. Swamp Donkey. Uh, we got AK Legend Genetics. AK uh, Legend in the house. And then we we got an unnamed grower uh, uh, throwing down some flow. Uh, flow OG. Sweet. Yeah, so flow OG. Yeah, back cross to itself. That's what I'm um, talking about. And verified genetics, though. It's you know sometimes it's a little bit different, but this stuff is O A O K. So that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, we definitely appreciate the support, um, and I'm going to pass it over here uh, to AK Legend and let him talk about a couple of the, the details on the strains and some uh, of the strains yeah, are going to be down there. What, what he's been cooking up, and, uh, yeah. and and some of the there's a lot of factors that go into deciding you know what strains you want to run, um, and Alaska is definitely on the premiere of picking the top genetics that are available to anybody in the, in the United States and uh, more over the world. So. Uh, Here's AK Legend. Yeah, let's hear what you guys got. Yeah, man, what are you cooking up? Yeah, what you got on board? I, I didn't even want to get rid of any of these. These uh, were all rat hole, to tell you the yeah. truth. I, this was a, a basically a, a homie hookup for Fuller oh, last nice. minute because I was so planning on pheno hunting stash. these packs. Yeah. These so, were all. So let's just say these, these are super limited. These aren't something that you're going to get off of a website. These were released one time earlier. This mm-hmm. is the the last of it is this some the, of the stuff these that, beans, I, yeah, there's basically, that we had got, that i had gotten from you before yep there's three strains that are going to be that'll be the last release the only chance you'll ever have to get them again uh ch- <clears throat> basically i ended up with a really stout durango og male mm. like that just screamed my breast over there okay. reek like burnt rubber had good structure just it had to be bred with and i only ran it one time and i'm not i didn't keep the mail so i'm not doing it again so mm-hmm. that's why this will be the last time for him but i humped it to a lot of just classic cuts that i hold i humped it uh which you'll have a chance to get at that fe- at the salmon festival will be salmon fest black domino lavender durango og there'll be a uh, purple kush durango og OG, and there's also a cherry pie Durango OG mm-hmm. and those are the three that will be available and like I said this is the last chance for these packs if you don't get them now it's that. a done deal I got another breeding program that'll be done here in about a month and a half and it's on to the next so this is basically the final last hurrah blowout for that last yeah. breeding program right. so very limited very well, how many packs are we talking here uh, we've got 60 packs of the Kanik Kush which was the purple Kush Durango Ooh. We got uh, 90 packs of the uh, Marinade, which is the Black Domino Lavender Durango. Mm, super limited. And then uh, the Cherry Pies cherry were the ones pie. that my personal favorite. we went the fastest, uh, the initial drop, and I got 30 packs of the Cherry Pie Durango. Super limited. Mm. You guys better not sleep on that shit. Don't yeah. fucking sleep. I'm, I'm actually p- personally, me and the homie, uh, Matt Sue Grower, are going to both do a combine run, try to find some phenos of a lot of Cherry Pie stuff, and uh, those are going in. Those are going all in. 
This should be fire, man. With supermodels hump, they don't leave <laughs> ugly kids, you know what I'm saying? So <coughs> it should be the reason big. It was kind so of So who are we talking? Fucking. What are we talking? Whose supermodel is that? Which one is that? Durango OG and the Chad no, I mean, If you were to compare it. Oh, man. Fuck. I don't know. Okay. That's, we won't get into that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll leave that for another discussion. <laughs> That's a whole different podcast. <laughs> That's a whole different podcast. <laughs> That's a different channel, son. <laughs> <laughs> it's rated more like Triple X instead of 420. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, mm, that was some orange terps in that locomotion. That loco's off the chain. Oh man, I love and it. that thing makes just horse sticks. Oh yeah, like, yeah, that's dude, yeah, monsters. Big old, big old donks, man. Tasty so, for sure. So, uh, tell us a little bit more about the event. You yeah, dates, yeah, times. Yeah. Do we go over that? Did I get too big well, to go over here? All that? Or? Well, it's this weekend. It's coming up this weekend so after, after that, the uh, podcast. It's going to be on Monday, uh, so we'll be The weekend to, of the... Uh, fifth. Fifth. Yep. Something like that. And uh, it's going to be going on three days. Uh, so you got Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You got the whole weekend. Yeah, music starts at about uh, 12 uh, p.m. Friday. Goes to about 1 o'clock that night. Um, Saturday, they start up a little bit early. Uh, I think around 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock. Um, and then they're, they're running all the way through the night, uh, ending the night with Railroad Earth and Rusted Root uh, at about 1 o'clock a.m. Rusted Root, dope. Yeah, Rusted Roots. They're, they're killing it. Uh, they come out with actually a lot of new stuff. Uh, as far as bands go, um, Sam and Fest did a great job this year of uh, getting together a good lineup. Um, I think they're on top of their game as far as festivals go. They've been around for a few years. I think it's going on seven years. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of festivals that are brand new, like uh, cannabis uh, uh, oriented, directed uh, events, and they've only been around a couple of years and they haven't got their shit together. I'm gonna be honest, I don't. I call them out. Bullshit. It sucks. But the thing is, is I've I've been to Salmon Fest myself Good quite a few years ago. One. There's some cool <laughs> glass blowers. It's kind of like a, uh, if you've ever been to Alaska and you've been to Bluegrass, it's like a more chill Bluegrass. There's not as much crazy shit going on, but there's really good vendors and uh, really good deals, a lot of chill vibes and super cool people. So. Yeah, definitely. And it's a family event. Uh, For so, sure. That's so bring the saying. kids out. Strong. Yep. And, yeah. um, you know, we, we want to see everybody like out more there. more family bluegrass. <laughs> I don't know if Honestly. CJ's going to make it all the way out there. I think he might be. Uh, gonna like he's going to be making about halfway. <laughs> 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 that shit's strong, son. What was that? Grape juice. That was the grape juice? That was the grape juice. Oh, yeah? Yeah, good night, Irene. I could taste the second hand, and it was like, oh. ooh. Ooh. Man, ooh. you see that roll of smoke? Mm, getting ooh, medicated over here. <laughs> yeah, baby. So yeah, continue on. You don't have to worry about this guy. He's gonna continue yeah, yeah, yeah. to smoke no matter what. Don't worry about it's, you know, I can say it's a, it's a bit distracting. Uh, partial jealousy, partial amazement. Um, oh man, I'm sorry. No, no, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> so if, if it gets too much, there's a carbon filter back there. You can hit that fan yeah, yeah, yeah. and you can clean it out. You can leave your little bit of oxygen. I really enjoy it. I don't know if you guys can see this, but we're like bathing in, in a cloud of smoke. I love it though. I love it. Matter of fact, where's my dab? Where's my torch? I need a, I need a dab after that. I gotta have a real one. The second hand's just not as good as the first I'm hand. I'm probably gonna you know? be good for a couple minutes. Cool, man. Yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> really, a couple minutes? You gonna make it two, three, Maybe four? Two or three minutes here. Well, Sorry, man. We really why, didn't mean to cut you off. That's all right. Why you guys wait? I think uh, something good to go over would be the genetics that we're gonna be coming uh, coming with from Swamp Donkey. Swamp Donkey for sure. Um, they've actually done some really amazing things for our uh, vets out there. Uh, with uh, making some strains for uh, PTSD. Uh, yeah, definitely. Stuff that's really euphoric, calming, uh, doesn't have any paranoia or anxiety. Um, and one of the main parts of the components of that breeding project is Cherry Mountain. Um, and Cherry Mountain's really where they get a lot of that uh, um, calming effect. And so what they've done is they cross the. Uh, Mr. Golden Ticket with the Cherry Mountain. The Chernobyl cut of Golden yep. Ticket. And um, Chernobyl they, ticket. they're calling that Lift Ticket. Lift Ticket. Uh, that's Lift Ticket to God. Uh, you know, that stuff tastes amazing. Um, the aromas with it is just uh, second, second to none. Uh, we got the Mountain Goat, mountain and that's goat. a Golden Goat crossed with the Cherry Mountain. Mm -hmm. um, uh, blood Diamonds, Blood Orange crossed mm. with the Cherry. That blood good. Orange, man. Everybody loves Blood Orange. Yeah. We were down in California. You could taste that everywhere. It was like <clears throat> the Cali MTF of California. It's Calio. Yeah, Calio. Yep, for sure. Yeah. Oranges. And then Orange. Uh, Sled Dog, which is White Dog crossed with uh, Cherry Mountain. Hmm. Um, and, and all these have been... 
uh, female selected for you know almost two years since the uh, breeding project's been going on a long for time. For sure. Dude, Swamp Donkey's legit. I, they've been around for a while, and they've, they've won some cups with even some of those, right? They actually have uh, two winning cups that they just took with the Cannabis uh, Classic, and uh, that's called Thunderfuck Mountain, uh, and that's the F4 uh, crossed with the Cherry Mountain, and then the Purple Frost Monster was also a winner, and that's the Katsu Bubba crossed with the Cherry Mountain. Mm. Um, so so definitely reputable sources, um, and we're, we're just really excited to start getting some of these genetics out there. Um, we want to want to gain a foothold in the in the market here uh, worldwide, um, and kind of make a stamp and show that uh, Alaska is here to stay. Um, we, we're going to have genetics uh, that are going to compete with the best in the world. Um, land races are coming. Uh, there are definitely some some projects out there that are going very interestingly. Um, you know, with our, our unique environment and uh, the sun and the latitude that we're at. Um, so we're, we're trying to develop stuff that is going to be good for all the residents of Alaska and uh, bring, bring something different that no one else has to offer. Um, and, and that's a really cool part about Alaska is that uh, we're pretty far up uh, as far as latitude longitude goes and the environment that we uh, pr- uh, live in allows for our cannabis to grow uh, very uniquely um, so being able to bring in the diversity of the environment as opposed or in combination with the diversity of the strains uh, some really unique things are on the horizon um, and that's that's what a lot of this is for um, is just furthering the industry uh, furthering the people in it and uh, just help, helping out locals really right on. right on man yeah for sure I think you're totally right with uh, right on point with the fact that Alaska has a uh, unique uh, take on cannabis. I think that a lot of stuff that comes out of here seems to be, I'm, I'm trying to be local, but better than a lot of other places. We pull a lot of really fire cuts out of here pretty commonly, so it seems like maybe it just grows better here. I don't know. Maybe yeah, we have man. better soil. <laughs> Ooh. I'm going to comment, but I want to hit this fucking dab. Man. <laughs> Hold on, son. Hold on, son. <laughs> Man, I haven't had even the, any of the grapes, but the orange has got me going. Oh, sorry about that. Going grape apes. <laughs> yeah, that locomotion actually mm. tested uh, at uh, myrcene levels of like three point five. Oh yeah, I love um, it, bro. It was, uh, it was. It's some of the guys down if there. If you ever at the get lab. a headache, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> the the myrcene causes a headache, and I think, or it's either myrcene or limonene causes a headache, and the myrcene or limonene relieves it the both there's the two different ones i gotcha yeah it's weird that is weird yeah those, those are the kind of things we're finding out you know it's so so new to to a lot of people and uh still new to us you know we got our uh our grasp on on what's going on for sure but uh i feel like every day something new is coming out um something something better something more for sure for sure something different so sam fest this coming weekend there's going to be Glass blowers, bands, all kinds of artists. You guys are gonna have <laughs> seeds available there from seeds local genetics. Available. There you go, you guys. We the were just talking about where to get local seeds. This is at. Where you need to go. This is Alaska. a chance for you guys to do it this coming weekend, <coughs> and this isn't gonna be the first time. So you know, like I said, it's gonna be breaking that stigma. It's gonna be getting out there. It's gonna be taking advantage of what's available to you, and uh, knowing that you don't have to hide in the closet anymore. You don't have to be Hiding back here, over behind. Got that 40 bag? Got that 40 bag? No, you fuck it. There's no stigma. This shit's fucking legal. It's fucking, in most states, you know, break it down. If it's not legal in your state, get out there, do something about it. Take advantage, vote. Uh, get out there, uh, organize a group of people. Whatever you can do to make it better for you. Because there's more states out there right now that it is legal than it isn't. And so, fucking people are realizing this is what it's about. And right now we have an, uh, excuse me, huge advantage on everybody else to uh, give a good example. And uh, that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to educate and uh, give a good example. You know, obviously we're dabbing it up. But the thing is, is in a hole in this room, there's a whole lot of good vibes from a lot of good people that ain't going to do nothing but give you good information. 
And if you're willing to open up and get out there and put yourself in the circle to break down that stigma, that's all you're going to get back. This isn't like alcohol. You're not going to get a people, bunch of people to fucking say, I'm going to get out of here. No, it's going to be people open arms and they're going to help you out and they're going to make it better for everybody unless they're not in it for the reason, good reasons. And if they're not in it for good reasons, the right reasons, then they're not going to make it in the game. So that's the truth. And, the, and local people in your area probably is going to be your best bet no matter where you're at. And if you're in Alaska, get down to Salmon Fest this weekend, meet some good local people, get some good local genetics, and take advantage of some good deals, man. It's going to be fun, man. And you know, there. you know, we want to we want to support Alaska, um, and we know <coughs> gardening is not the easiest thing to do. Uh, so as a part of this donation, uh, as, as you donate into the uh, bin there uh, for the... <coughs> Excuse me, the dab's got me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Chugga, 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 chugga. Here it is. Her train <laughs> coming to town. We're going to be giving away Sour D Cut from Archive Seed Bank in Portland, Oregon. Oh, shit. Mm. Giveaways. We love giveaways. Yep. I'm going to sit back and listen to this because I might this might entice Ooh, me to come yeah, down. So every fest. donation that you make to, to get beans from our local growers um, is going to enter you into our bin uh, to, at the end of the weekend, have a drawing, and uh, we're going to give you a cut of the sour diesel from Archive Seed Bank. Um, Hell yeah. You know, just because we appreciate all the support that you guys are giving and uh, coming down to Salmon Fest Archive in the first Seed place. Cuts. Uh, we know some people are going to be... Might. Traveling from uh, from a long ways to come down to the God mites just make me fucking laugh. <laughs> There's been a lot of local stuff going on, so I just had to throw it out there. Yeah, pretty th- funny. These are definitely clean cuts, folks, clean and um, we will uh, we will be talking more about uh, bringing on maybe some more cuts, uh, depending on how the weekend goes. You know, if you it's guys come out to support things. us, uh, you know, we could be we could be definitely throwing some more cuts out there. Uh, so awesome. just just think about it. Make make the trip down, and and if you don't, uh, you know, leave us a leave us a post and. Um, you know, wish well to everybody out there that's getting these genetics. We'll we'll hook you guys up with uh, some local people if you guys drop those messages. We don't mind doing it. Don't mind uh, giving you that information where you can find them at. They're out there. Like I told you before, it just takes a little Google or Instagram or Facebook searches. It ain't that hard. All you gotta do is a little apply a little energy and a little effort. You know, what I'm the most stoked about. What's that? Right before we came over here. What's that? I ran into the old school weed dude from the hood where I grew up. Okay. He moved in to my hood out here. Your old the old G plug? Like I grew up in Indian, like out in the middle of BFE okay. on the way to Girdwood. <coughs> the wood. There was if you an don't old know. school cat. I mean everybody's neighborhood hopefully has that old school cat who was the plug back in the day. Uh-huh. And uh hey, come here, bro. <clears throat> I've lived far enough away from my community where I grew up in Girdwood and Burton Indian now that I don't have the old school ends. A lot of people moved away, you know, it's just the younger generation didn't stick, so but this dude still has the old school plug and was talking to him about like he's old retired like he don't grow no more but he still knows all the cats and uh he said he'd be down to plug me with the old school girdwood cuts like the good the cuts that i grew up on in bird indian and girdwood and there's three or four strains that were the old school indigenous and there's a lot of cats who can claim that they can get them but this was like the old school dude who was the source for one or two of these originals so in upcoming if 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 it works out the way i'm so hoping it is crosses yeah new school cross with a little of the old school alaskan flavor that and that's sweet. from my neck of the woods like we out in the valley now and i know there was a lot of old school travels, wonderful valley flavors travels. but like girdwood had its own thing always did girdweed was the shit back in the day so for sure for sure hopefully you'll see some of the old school girdwood flavors coming up here soon in some breeding programs i'm sorry i'm sorry yeah. You ever smoke any Girdwood weed? I probably have. I just I didn't get a, a sticker on it that said this is Girdwood weed. Nah, there's everybody's got those indigenous <laughs> strains where they came from. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That were like, and that's what I wish people would get back to, man. Because smell brings on that sense of nostalgia right. like nothing else. As and impressed as I am with some new genetics out there, like, and I wonder if we like remember with rose tinted lenses that shit that we grew up on i you know if you took it to the fucking testing lab i would guarantee you that a lot of those probably were mid-teen strains Mm. that smell fantastic but 
personally, I would rather smoke some of those or get some of those flavors the back there because are up there in the high everything is such a mush now. Right. I mean, finding something to grow that doesn't have cookies or OG in it is People goddamn near impossible. The THC to be high have definitely. Uh, I won't want to say like it's pushed into the direction. Yeah, it's definitely been gone that direction. And then a bunch of breeders realized that if you had cookies or OG and in the name, that it was that an easy earlier, way yeah. to sell seeds. So I, I went mean, off on it earlier. I was like, uh, yeah, let me tell you about fucking dilution of fucking cannabis. In you general. know, you know, we should talk about pissing in the cannabis. Everybody, I dude, I'll make some people mad right now. Let's hear There's it. no MTF. I already went over it before. Did we go over? Okay, good. There is no MTF. Look, I'm going to tell you right now. Anything that came out of the Matsu Valley in the 1970s, 80s, early 90s, it was a catch-all term for (laughs) anything that came out of this hood. There is at least a dozen different contenders that could all legitimately claim to be MTF. It doesn't mean any one of them is better than the others or anything else, but there was a ton of fire. I think we went over that, and you know what I said? I said, if anybody... It drives me crazy. You want to hear what I said, though? On top of all that, I said, if there was one strain of all strains that anybody had to classify as officially MTF, okay, it would be that cut in the 80s that came out that was Northern Lights, White Widow Crossed. That fucking the HA people had, but it wasn't fucking. It was not MTF. It was Northern were, Lights, White Widow Cross, the, and they just called it MTF. Man, that's the only one that people claim though. Like, I really. mean, dude, there was some old but school. No, there was, was an old school like weed. land race Afghan that came from out here that I, I know personally has been out I here even for forty said that years. Too. I was like, it went Afghan by the name version. the Funk. And Everybody Afghan called it the version. Funk. Get out of here, bro. yeah, right yo, here. no, it was said it made dinner plates like it made leaves the size of like Afghan version, dude. Straight land race. I was like, and there was like an Afghan one. It could legitimately be that. It's been out here for like forty years, and I know people who still hold that cut. Like, it's there is a but it's still an Afghan. Afghan, though it's not really MTF. No, I've I've it's literally been told it was of MTF. Some Afghan plant. There's no land race, alas. If you're old school Valley, if you remember the dog dick red, like that shit could be considered MTF. There was that shit that went around where the buds were as red as this is for like a long time back in the early '90s, late '80s, and there was right. a lot of that, and it was fire. But yeah, no MTF. That shit is basically like a way for people to cash in on a Man, name. I'm getting high off of the fucking fumes in here, guys. Yeah, I thanks again. The nabs. <laughs> 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 but the fumes are dead serious, bro. They're pretty nice in here. Loving it. Loving it. Find that thing up again. Mm. Like you didn't hit no grape juice yet, Oranges and grapes. Yeah, what's that? Grape juice. Hey, careful throwing shit in front of me, man. What are we at? <laughs> How long are we at, bro? Where are we at now? We're at 24. 24? So, uh, probably trying to run it up and, like, see what we got. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Maybe, maybe I'll be able to make it. Never know. We got Salmon Fest coming up. Yeah. Might be able to make Either it. Either be square. There. Thank you guys. AK Legend, Fuller, coming out, providing meds. Any last words, you guys? I'm sure you want to. <laughs> Definitely last words mm-hmm. uh, through, the, through the cough. Uh, I want to say thank you to you guys to uh, have the yeah, podcast, no um, and to all the people that come down to Salmon Fest. Uh, even if you're not interested, just just come and say hi and see what we're all about. Um, come out to the booth, see AK Gypsy, uh, really AK awesome Gypsy. T-shirts, Shout crystals. Out AK Gypsy. Yep, and um, on Instagram. There you go. She's is on, she? I I believe she is. Yep. If not, just be a name down there. That's right, and uh, to to also the genetics companies, because uh, these guys are working day and night trying to trying okay, to create legends. something for uh, hey, local. Um, absolutely, thank you guys uh, all for coming out and supporting this cause, and uh, rock on Salmon Fest at Swamp Donkey Seeds. Anybody else? Any other shout outs? Yeah, thanks for having us. Oh, this yeah. is the Grow Green Podcast. Grow Green Stone. Podcast. Eric Weed. Eric Stay Weed. frosty, my friends. AK Legend Gardens. Fuller. Fuller. AK Legend Gardens. Peace out. Peace out. Yo, it's the Grow Green right. Podcast. Hold another fat one, puffing on that first class green. Take another puff, puff, hey. Drifting the clouds up, up and away. Here all about cannabis, water, culture, plus cultivation, news and entertainment. Not forgetting that the cute Dalmatian. Grow Green is so amazing. We do massive dabs, not talking about the dance move. Grow Green, put your lighters on my dude. Hash joy, your linen so great. Smoke cannabis every single day. We do massive dabs, not talking about the dance move. Grow green, put your lighters on, my dude. Ask sure you'll get that high grade. Smoke cannabis every single day, yo.